Hey all you punctual bards and bardettes, welcome back to iCast Fish's Mockery. A show about rare and interesting timepieces. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> what? Ca- cardio. Car- oh. Athleticism. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, and rare and interesting timepieces. I'm okay. I yeah, got you. It, right. Okay. That's how the. I'm Matt, and I'm Austin. Um, I went running yesterday. Oh, I don't do that. Mm. Like ever. I think the last time I went running. It was well over a year ago. What's your movement speed? Bad. Okay. Lower than average. Okay. Gotcha. Probably. Uh, I don't know. I well, well, okay, I can move pretty fast. I just can't do that for a long time. Mm. So I don't know what that says about me. My constitution is low. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't in D D you can kind of like your characters are they're superhuman in a lot of ways, particularly mm. when it comes to uh, traveling while encumbered. They right. Are, they are very much superhuman. Yeah. In, in that sense. Right. Anyway, yeah. Absolutely. So how did this running uh, business go? It was, uh, I mean, it wasn't anything too crazy. Sounds like it was very pleasant. It was, well, <laughs> I ran for, th- for three miles total, mm-hmm. but uh, it was, it was a, a half mile run and then whatever like the time it took you to to do the half mile you rest that amount of time and then you do it again six six times Mm -hmm. so it's three miles um you know i mean it was a great way to ease back into it because you know it was a way for me to be able to run three miles without like like just literally dying Mm -hmm. uh but uh, you know, so uh, <laughs> there's like a there's like a park around here, uh, and I was it, it has mile markers on it. You know which one I'm talking about, probably. Yeah, yep, uh, I got you. Right. Um, so they mark they mark actually every tenth mile. So it, it, it's it's pretty motivating, I think. Like, okay, yeah, okay. Like you can see your progress as you're going. All right, that's nice. Well, on my run. Uh, a red winged blackbird hit me right in the back of the head. Like literally just flew into the back of my head. It must have been on purpose. Mm-hmm. Like there's no way it just like accidentally hit me in the back of the head. Right. Like just right into me. Uh, that was weird. I mean, it didn't really hurt. I mean, birds are so light. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would have been like somebody throwing uh, a little bit like crumpled up paper at you as hard as they could. Right. Exactly. Like it, 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 there was no mark. I'm totally fine. I survived, Mm -hmm. but it was just really strange. Uh, So then that was within the first half mile. (laughs) Then uh, approaching mile 1.5, There was, there was a, uh, there was a bunch of geese, a gaggle, gaggle of geese Mm -hmm. that were just like, like uh, stretched across the pathway. Like there was no way to really go around them. So I didn't want to stop because I had my momentum going. I was going. So I just kind of like tried to give the the geese the widest berth I could. And the, and one of them hissed at me very threateningly like and you guys geese geese are awful like at least um what which whatever kind of geese we have in northeastern united states right yeah i don't know what kind of geese they are yeah they're i I would assume that most geese are like that um but uh, there are different geese all over the world so right and these geese in particular yeah these geese in particular the, are, these ones are the ones who you see in the internet videos right like chasing uh, people yeah and, yeah they're they're the big gray ones with the black head and the white stripe on the sides of the head yeah that's, right that's our geese right exactly like and i had never been hissed at by a goose before mm-hmm. i'd also never gotten that close to a goose before mm-hmm. it wasn't really that close though mm-hmm. uh, anyway um I, I I had to look. I literally had to look behind me to make sure the goose was not chasing me. Mm-hmm. Every 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 couple of steps, 
because I thought for sure it was going to start chasing me. It did not, thankfully. And they were gone on my way back, so it was fine. I had to like retrace my steps. I like went a half mile, a mile and a half one way, and then a mile, the mile and a half back. So, uh, yeah, I had a lot of bird trouble. Yeah, a lot of bird trouble. The nice trouble. thing about geese, though, is that the mm -hmm. um, the the neck can act as a handle, and uh, a goose does one d six bludgeoning damage. Oh. when used as a melee weapon mm. um so you can really take out a couple of uh, uh geese. a couple of yeah, if you use like an action surge and stuff and you, you can really get a couple uh down each turn and uh you won't take too much damage i think you know i really did not feel terribly threatened by the goose <laughs> you know no, yeah when you it would be annoying if a bunch of them chased you while you were running right exactly especially because then everybody watching would be like oh he's running away from geese but you were like you were already like this is already the direction you were going like it's not right. because of the geese. Right, exactly. Uh, I'm not running away from the geese. I'm just running. Like like I'm just running for exercise and the, and the geese, geese are didn't like that. Behind me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, they voted no for exercise. But, but also like if it came down to it and they were being really aggressive, like I'd have to do something about it. Yeah, you'd probably have to like kick at them. Right, and I don't want to hurt the geese really. Right. Yeah, like they all had kids with them probably right you know? right well the kids were actually pretty far away which is why mm -hmm. i was surprised that they hissed at me mm -hmm. because i was not anywhere near any of the kids mm -hmm. I, yeah i don't know uh i just i don't know i wouldn't want to hurt the geese right yeah but, but i was annoyed by them uh in fact you know what i have a related goose story <laughs> this was about driving though so um, there's like a grocery store around here where there's. Oh, I know the one. Yo, you know the one. Well, they have like this pond, so they're like geese all all the time, always there. So I was cutting through that that area to go. I was actually not even going there. I was going somewhere else, and there was a line of geese like stretched across the street. So I stopped because you're not supposed to drive through the geese. Right. You're not supposed to just run over animals. Right. Uh, exactly. That's like part of the whole driving deal and i was just you know waiting for them to cross they were being slow because they're geese mm -hmm. geese are slow yeah that's why it's that's why they're called geese right exactly um i i, I was sitting there for like not very long and uh this guy was like approaching pretty quickly like behind me mm -hmm. and then he went around like he literally went into the oncoming traffic lane mm -hmm. to go around me mm -hmm. i'm like dude don't you think i'm stopped here for a reason and literally drove through the geese <laughs> did he hit the geese no they oh, moved okay. out of the way somehow in time i don't know how they managed that yeah he did not hit a goose but he did drive through them yeah usually if you keep going you would just hit them yeah well right exactly i it was kind of a miracle actually that he mm -hmm. did not hit the geese uh and there was a car behind him mm -hmm. who probably was just following him and also went around me but it's like guys i'm not stopped here just to be but, stopped yeah, in the middle i'm not just, hanging out, I'm just hanging out stopped in the middle of the road i was i was actually that i don't get angry very often that made me cross i was mad at that guy because i was like why do you hit the geese? <laughs> why? Why did you drive? It's only a through, game. Why do you have to be mad? Yeah, exactly. Why did you? Like, I just don't. I there was no re. Don't like that. Like interfering with animals like that with your car. I don't know. I don't. That didn't. It rubbed me the wrong way. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. Um. So if you're listening to this, which I know you are, because we're the most popular show on the internet, how dare you? You know who you are. But at the same time, on behalf of the geese, we do forgive you. Yes. You are forgiven because the geese are better than you. The geese are better the than you. The geese are better than you, scum. <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> you just putrid, disgusting human being. All right. So, uh, hey. We got any homebrew up in here? We sure do. It's got a uh, 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 port port and port and press. Portent press is the user today. 
Like P O R T E N T? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, Portent gotcha, gotcha, Press. Gotcha, yes. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Uh, this is a this is a this is your packed boon for your warlock mm-hmm, that you mm-hmm. could that you could do if you wanted. Uh, it's the pact of the shield. The pact of the shield. Pact of the shield. Impressive. Yeah. Um, okay. So your patron grants you a magic shield. This right. is a lot like the sword one. Okay. But it's a shield. Uh, wait, the sword one. Oh, is that one that is just normal? Yeah, that's like a normal one. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, where you get a sword. Gotcha, okay. There's one, I think the normal three are you get a a, a guy, like a dude. It's like your familiar dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get a book uh, or you get like a sword. I think those are the main ones. Yeah. Um, yeah, the Pact of the Tome, Pact of the Chain, Pact of the... I don't remember what the sword one's called. Anyway, uh, you are proficient with the shield, uh, of course. Um, wielding it does not interfere with somatic components of spells. And in fact, you can actually use it as an arcane focus. So far, cool stuff. I like this. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, and and just like the sword version... You can take any shield that you find and make that your shield that you have from the pact shield. You like a Ritz of Ritual. Yeah, it's all that stuff, yada, yada. Okay, so you learn the spell shield. <gasps> no. I know. It makes sense. <laughs> uh, and 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 mm-hmm. you can cast it at higher levels, which will increase the bonus to your AC by one for every spell slot above the first. Now that's pretty good. You could just cast it at ninth level and nothing can hit you because now you have a 28 <laughs> armor class or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Cause it's normally plus two, I think, right? Shield, a uh, shield. It's, it's not, it's nothing crazy, but if you cast that at ninth level, that's plus 11. Or something. Right, something like that. Or maybe it would be plus eight or, you know, but still. But still, it, it if would. If you start out with like a respectable armor class anyway, and you you are wielding a shield, let's not forget that. Yeah. Uh, then you're going to, yeah, you're going to be at like 28 armor class. Right. And, and, and it's a reaction. Yeah, exactly. Whew. So you can just be like, that ain't hit me right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is. I, 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 lo- I love the idea. That like someone will fire an arrow directly at you and you'll be like, that misses. And it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like absolutely guarantee you. Mm-hmm. And they'll be mm-hmm. like, what? But but like they saw it going right at you and it's like right here in front of your face and you're like, sorry, man, just d- it didn't hit me. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to break this to you. <laughs> This is how it goes. It didn't hit. Did you? What did you do? Like, did you move out of the way? <laughs> no. No, it just didn't hit. It moved out of the way. Yeah. Because it didn't hit me. It didn't hit me. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, but it went from there to there, and it didn't hit me. <laughs> Shield. Shield. Okay. So there are some invocation options here. Uh huh. So you could, um, when you, the the invocation options, as a reminder, they're things that you get to pick as a warlock. Mm -hmm. You like have a list of things you can pick. Right. Sometimes they have prerequisites, but they're just like stuff you get to do at certain times. At certain milestones, I should say. Okay. So you could get the accursed shell. Yo, yo, yo. Right. So. Uh, the prerequisite is ninth level. Uh, you can cast fire shield once without expending a spell slot and you regain the ability every long rest. Additionally, when you cast the spell fire shield, you can choose instead to activate an accursed shield, which grants you resistance to radiant damage and deals necrotic damage. What does fire shield do? I actually don't know. But I think it has some damaging something. Yeah, it sounds like it. We'll but, go with that. Yeah. Okay. Eldritch Protection, mm-hmm. fifth level, is the prerequisite. While you're wielding your pack shield, 
you can also wield another shield. <laughs> and, and yes, you get the benefits of both. <laughs> That's great. So now you can stack your shield. That's the picture, by the way. The picture is of a dude with two shields. <laughs> <laughs> and he looks angry, but it's hard to take him seriously because he's holding two, two shields. shields. Don't know if you noticed. But if there's one thing I know about that guy, it's that he has two shields. Two shield. Welcome to our new show, Two Shield. Uh, improved pack shield. Your pack mm -hmm. shield grants an extra plus one magic bonus to your armor class and to dexterity saving throws while you're <laughs> wielding it. Yeah. I like the idea that you're super dexterous and nimble because you've got two shields on. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a separate one. Yeah. Okay. But, but, but yes. Oh, oh I it, see. So it, it, it could be, it could stack. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then uh, wait that that yeah. other one though the, yes. the, that one about the dexterity thing mm -hmm. that should also give you the ability to slit on your shield. Mm, shield like surfing, a, sur yeah, to surf mm -hmm. with it. Mm. It already has the straps that you can like hook your feet into if you wanted. Mm -hmm. So like that makes sense. Or you could like get a, in a crouching position and grab onto it so it doesn't. I'm just saying like there has to be a reason that the shield doesn't just like fall out from under your feet at every mm -hmm. at any given bump. Yeah. And now that I'm thinking of this, though, too, mm -hmm. I kind of want to use like a, like a pot lid as the shield. <laughs> like a wooden like just. Yeah. Or, or, or some other dumb thing like that. Like a, like a like a shack door that you just like ripped off the hinges. Yeah. 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 E either too big or too plain or too small or 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 too, too brittle yeah yeah or unwieldy or whatever i, I want to use something like that as the shield i like the door that's really fun yeah you just walk <laughs> around with like a six foot door <laughs> yeah exactly like not a, not a super tall door not like a one that a person would fit through without ducking mm -hmm. but just like a door it's a door it's a door and, and it's good enough at keeping people out of a place. Yeah, right. Like nobody broke into there except you to take the door. <laughs> I almost feel like you just like made a character that, oh, well, it's good enough to keep people out of the place. <laughs> well, I can't just use it as a shield then. Huh? Well, how are you going to bring that like with you place? Like how are you going to get into another door with that on well, your arm? I just figured it's good enough for keeping people out, you know, it's uh, good enough for that. So. <laughs> No, but this isn't, this is not about if that is a, like a suitable shield. Like, sure. Okay. If you set that up in front of you, probably an arrow isn't going to go through it, except there are right. holes in it and stuff. Well, I'm glad you see things my way. Right. But the problem is like, what if we need to get on a boat and there's no room for it? Because I don't know if you noticed, it's a door. Uh, well, or like, like what? If, what if we need to crawl into a like a, a small passageway? And I, did you did you realize that that's the size of I don't know a door? Well, I can, I can just get another door. There are doors all over the place. <laughs> I like you know? the idea that he just <laughs> he just goes into like the big bad evil guy's <laughs> lair, and he's yeah. like. I've got a lot to work with in here. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of doors in this place. <laughs> yeah, it's just a different door every time. Yeah. He starts doing the ritual and they're like, come on, man, we don't have time for the this. The ritual involved like includes the step like as as he's going to hammer the pin out of the door, he like does it ritualistically. <laughs> yeah. Like there's magic coming out of him and he's like ting 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 ting. Oh, this one, this one needs some oil or something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Does anyone have WD-40? <laughs> There's one more. Okay. Uh, subsuming shield. I know. What does that even mean? Mm -hmm. uh, the prerequisite is 15th level. So this one's probably pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, as a reaction, uh, if you're targeted by a spell attack, or a spell that requires a dexterity saving throw, mm -hmm. you can brandish your pack shield and attempt to absorb the spell's energy. If the spell is a fifth level or lower, 
the spell automatically fails. It has no effect. And you Ooh. and you regain Whoa. an expended warlock spell slot. Whoa! <laughs> if the spell is six level or higher, yeah. make a charisma ability check. Uh-huh. The DC is 10 plus the spell's level. On a success, the spell fails, has no effect. You you gain a warlock spell slot. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, if you use this invocation, you can you can only use it once per long rest, though. So mm-hmm. you can only do it once, which that's fair because that's right. pretty darn that good. That would be way too good if you could just keep doing it. Way too good. Way too good. Way too good. And way too good. Again, there's there is there really isn't room for interpretation. But mm-hmm. would you allow? You try it, it doesn't work on a higher level spell. Can you try it again? Or you tried it so it's done. I guess you tried it so it's done. Yeah, I mean that's it uses the, the invocation. That's the that is the answer. Mm-hmm. Just by way of how it works. I guess you'd have to you'd have to like explain what happens, like how, right. how the, the shield absorbs part of it, but then it but then it was just too strong. Yeah. yeah. I mean, then, that's pretty easy. So then it hits you through the shield and like the shield itself heats up or something. And maybe may, that'd be interesting if it like changed some of the damage into fire damage or something. Or it like overloaded the shield and mm-hmm. the magic exploded out of the shield. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah. I could see that happening yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like or, it all, or yeah. I don't know if, if like the, if your patron lives in the shield, they like slammed the door on it and they were like, nope, you're dealing with this. Uh, back to the door again. Yeah. No, but there's a little <laughs> door in it now. Oh, okay. There's like a little door and your patron is like like this, like two inches tall. Mm-hmm. And they come out of the door and they're like, all right, I'll absorb that one. Or they come out of the door and they're <laughs> like, like, nope, nah. not today. Boom. I don't like that one. Yeah. Not absorbing it. Yeah. It's a cuckoo clock, but it's a shield. Uh, and I think it actually can tell time. I think it can, but um, like other than like a watch face on the shield, mm-hmm. it's the day the your your patron just comes out and is like, it's midday. Yeah, <laughs> and and actually they they tell you that like they they open the door and then they look at the sun. Yeah, and then they just tell you <laughs> right exactly, right, and they. They don't do it on a reliable schedule or anything like that. No. They just kind of do it when they want. <laughs> whenever they feel like it. Yeah. So mm. it's it's pretty different than other shields that can't tell time, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, it is, you know, it's a little different than most shields. Most shields don't tell time. Now, now I want a clock shield, though. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> just by the nature of what shields are for, like what they do. I don't know. It just doesn't feel very practical. But, but it uh, would be like unless it's, it's like the a, right shape, though. Unless it's like a sundial. No, it's already like the right shape on the shield. Like what do you mean? It's, it can oh, have a clock face on. Well, the front. not all shields are round. No, but some are. Yeah, and the ones that are not. You got I mean, me there. Not all clocks are round. Mm, no, you're right. Not all clocks are round. Yeah. It's a digital clock. <laughs> It's a digital clock, it's a digital clock on with the calculator. Now this thing has <laughs> features, man. Did you know you, you know those those Casio watches? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, b- both the ones with the calculators, but the uh, also the similar digital watches that are like five dollar. Yeah, watches yeah, really like super like cheap. Yeah, people uh, modify those to put like NFC chips or stuff like that in them. Oh. It's pretty cool. They they come up with some pretty cool stuff. Um. I, I think I've seen USB, uh, like flash flash drives and stuff, um, and I think I saw a wireless charging mod. <laughs> a wireless charging, which is pretty crazy. Mod. I mean, it's it's For- inferior to the original design in every way, because why would you want to wirelessly charge your watch whose battery lasts ten years? But <laughs> yeah. but uh i think i've seen that but yeah exactly uh fascinating yeah so i'm just thinking like what if you could mod your casio watch into your packed shield uh 
Uh, yeah. Uh, why not? I, you see, I don't see why not. You've got me there. I, I have why, got you. There. Yeah. Mod. You, they're pretty resilient. My only, they, they actually, they are. Yeah. So <laughs> my, pretty tough. my only, yeah. My only thing I, that I could say is like, well, most watches can't withstand the damage of like the impact that a shield takes. Right. But those ones probably could. Yeah. So I. Plus they, they is magic -y. Yeah. I, f I find myself at an impasse here. Yeah. I so, must acquiesce to your demands. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be my next character. They modded their. <laughs> they modded their shields. They're, they're, they're a warlock because they have a Casio watch and they accidentally modded it to include Cthulhu in it. <laughs> <laughs> whoops cthulhu oopsie poopsie there's oopsie, the tentacles it's in a, my watch it's a watch with cthulhu yeah um darn not again oh no oh no oh, oh, oh he's got a cthulhu he's in got watch cthulhu again. in the oh, watch mate, mate. Oh. I don't, that might've been my worst uh, accent I've ever done. I recently watched a video about, you see, I watched a lot of theme park. I talked about theme parks theme in par my yeah, last theme one. parks. Let's talk about. Yeah. Uh, apparently there was this company that made like the best theme park in Australia. It was like right outside of Sydney. Uh huh. I forget the company entirely. Um, but they had the rights to like cartoon network and like, cause you know, like, okay, this is interesting, mm -hmm. um, to think about. But uh, companies like intellectual property rights work differently in different countries. Right. So like different like like sections of intellectual properties are owned by different like sections of companies in different countries. Mm -hmm. So like the same company who owned Cartoon Network also owned Marvel <laughs> in Australia. Right. Yeah. Like, like weird stuff like that. Right. Um. <clears throat> So yeah, it was like this theme park. It was it was Hanna Barbera, mm -hmm. Cartoon Network, which which are owned by the same company now. Right. I yeah. think, in in the U.S. They, they are, yeah. But but then also Marvel, mm -hmm. which has been owned by Disney for a long time. Yeah. Uh, well, it was I think. since 2012? twenty twelve, twenty. Well, two thousand eight is when the movies started coming out. Disney didn't own them yet. Really? I, I I don't think that they did yet. Yeah. They didn't own them when the when it started? Yeah, I thought that was part way through. Oh, it was right before Age of Ultron. Really? Right yeah. before Age of Ultron. Yep. That's why Ultron sings Disney songs. Okay. I mean specifically Pinocchio, but Yeah. yeah. Well, there ain't no strings on me. He, I uh, think he might reference other stuff too. But. Yeah, they started doing that in the the first couple after that. Okay. I yeah. didn't realize they weren't always owned by Disney. Yeah. I thought that they were. No, they were their own thing. I th Which is crazy that they got it off the ground like that. Yeah. Well, the f the I I mean Iron Man was like really pretty good mm -hmm. for what it was mm -hmm. in the beginning. I would yeah. have believed that would have been made by Disney. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Marvel Studios was his own entity. It was, yeah. Oh, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I also don't know. So I, I, well, okay. One thing I do know, uh, uh, Universal owned the rights to Marvel in general for a while mm -hmm. because they have Marvel properties in their theme parks. Right. And when disney bought marvel they were basically like hey universal we won't put any marvel themed anything in disney world <laughs> right as like part of yeah, the, yeah as yeah. like part of the deal right um i think that they are going to now though well right well there was a time limit i'm oh, sure okay, yeah, yeah. on on the agreement right mm -hmm. and i can guarantee you that they opened that Marvel stuff in Disney world as soon as yeah. that agreement was done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because they did open a bunch of Marvel stuff in Disneyland. Right. Because there was no agreement with that. Cause I guess there's no universal or it's not as close in California. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, it, I think that might, well, they are pretty close. They're both right by LA, right? Di like so. Yeah, because Disneyland is in Anaheim. Yeah. 
Um, and I don't the know. Universal, what... I want to say, is also in Anaheim. Oh, is it really? I yeah. didn't. I didn't. They, know they might be really close, but I, for some reason, they're not. I don't know. Yeah, they weren't held to like they. Yeah, they didn't. I don't know. They they were able to do it sooner in mm-hmm. Disneyland for some reason. Well, Disneyland is smaller. That yes, and so people usually go to both anyway. Oh, Disney yeah. World is so big, though. Yeah, that they... people will just go to that. Right. And not go to Universal and not over go there, anywhere unless else, there's yeah. a specific thing that like Harry Potter or whatever that brings right. them to Universal, which is, I think, the main drive to Universal now. Yeah. Is the Harry Potter, especially over there, at, like the Universal in, in Orlando. Orlando. Yeah, exactly. We see we almost went to Universal Osaka, but we got off the, the train one stop ahead of it. We went to the aquarium instead. But now I wonder what it's like there. Yeah, I guess i didn't even know that there was one uh actually disney tokyo disney Mm -hmm. was the first like american like theme park Mm -hmm. to open in another country whoa um and it's also the only disney theme park that's not owned by disney oh who's it owned by uh it's owned by the tokyo the tokyo Bears, real the estate group. Team. There's oh. where Tokyo. They're called the Tokyo something company, I think. But but like Di- Disney, the Disney still like approves things, mm-hmm. but they do not own or operate the park at all. Whoa! I know, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Now I got to go see how it, how it operates. I got to go there and try it out. Right. I'd love. Yeah. I really want to go visit there. Yeah. Um. Anyway, that that was that was a tangent of the tangent I was going yeah, on. Yeah, I forget which. Ta- okay, we, can we get back to your tangent about the Sydney place? Yeah. So in Australia, so they yeah they had this like great theme park and like everybody loved it, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's so I there were so many interviews with all these Australian natives who were like, "This is the best theme park ever." We come here like every weekend uh, in the summer, you know, like all this stuff. And then some other company bought it, like for some reason. Mm-hmm. And this is so sad because like b- there were literally videos of people crying about it because they bought it and they were like, okay, um, we're not going to expand anymore. Like this theme park, whatever it was called, I think it was called Wonderland Sydney. Yeah. It was called Wonderland Sydney. Yeah. I know that. Uh, you know, of when, no. oh, you don't. Yeah. Well, well, it's been <laughs> closed for a long time now. Yeah. Uh, because this company bought it and they, it it had been expanding like every year for the, for like the last like decade or something like that, uh, because it was so popular and this company bought it and they were like, oh, we don't need to expand anymore. And then they literally just like started shutting rides down for no reason. They're like, oh, people don't even like this ride. So they would like rope it off and like shut it down Mm -hmm. and, and people would be like. Oh, that was, oh, that's my favorite ride. Uh, uh, why? Oh, I, I really miss riding that one. Yeah. I'm out. I, that's not Australian. That's not Australian. It's okay though. Uh, but people would, would travel from Northern England to Australia. So right for this theme park, that's what you were. Illustrating. Yes. That's exactly my, <laughs> what I was trying to say. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then, yeah, it just got to the point where we were closed. And you know what? One thing that they had at that, uh, that theme park they had uh, the world at the time, the world's largest crocodile or alligator. Alligator? What do they have in Australia? Do they have both in Australia? I think they have both, but the crocodile hunter is the guy from Australia. So let's go with crocodile. It's probably a crocodile. It was a huge crocodile. And, uh, and like 20, 20 something feet? Uh, it must he, be. Huge. Just, 30 yeah, feet. something like know. that. I don't know. Because I don't think that there's like a limit on how long a, a crocodile or alligator can grow to. I oh, think eventually they're, they're one of those species where just like. They just keep they, going. They yeah. go until they can't eat, eat enough to survive. To survive. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and in captivity, apparently, mm-hmm. that's quite a lot. Right. <laughs> as, <laughs> as they have found out. Right. Although the standard alligator or crocodile in captivity doesn't get as big as a lot of wild ones. Um, so the wild ones must be taking down some big stuff, dude. Yeah. Crocodile, man, they're scary, man. They just sit there and they just wait Mm -hmm. and then just wait Mm 
Mm-hmm. And then something comes by and they're just like, ah, gotcha. Well, they still wait. They wait so long. Yeah. They wait until it's almost certainly going to get away from them. <laughs> like like yeah. it's, it's had its time to inspect them and check them out and be like, uh, you know what? That thing is so big. I should be alarmed right now. I shouldn't be near it. <laughs> I, I, should, I should not. Probably, should probably start to hightail it. And as soon as their brain registers <laughs> that they should probably turn around, that's it. That's it. That's when the- it got them. It grabs their leg. It takes it off. It grabs the other one, takes it off, eats the whole thing, whatever. Right. Starts rolling around yeah. like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you want to hear about this unstable orb? Yeah, I want to hear about an unstable orb. Yeah, cool. Uh, well, it's by user uh, Rashisar. I believe Rashisar has been here before. That does sound familiar, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember what else he's or she mm-hmm. has had before. But uh, hey, okay. So this is a sp- uh, spell. It's a spell. I thought it was a magic item, but upon closer inspection, it's a spell. Okay. So it sounds like a sequel to Chromatic Orb. Yeah, uh, <laughs> right. Uh, chromatic Orb Part 2 Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Unstable Orb. A- action to cast 30 feet range. Lots of stuff you have to do. Um, okay. So you make this orb, mm-hmm. you, you pick it out of your nose, right? and then That's you it, yep. flick it towards a point you can see within range. Mm-hmm. The, the nose part was something I made up, yeah. but you flick it. So I thought of uh, something you get from your nose. Okay, roll a d4. If you roll a four, the orb instantly bursts on impact, dealing a 1d6 lightning damage to all creatures within five feet of a point that you chose to send it. Oh. They also have to fail a dexterity saving throw. The way this is worded is a little crazy, but they make a dexterity saving throw if they fail 1d6 lightning damage all creatures within 5 feet of the point that you picked. <laughs> that was also crazy. When you cast the spell. We're, we're getting there. <laughs> all right. Otherwise, if you don't roll a 4, uh-huh, on the d4, right. It lands on the point that you chose and begins to grow in size. Mhm. So at the start of your next turn, Mm -hmm. that's when it blows up and it deals a D six lightning damage to all creatures within 10 feet who fail a dexterity saving throw. And then the spell ends. (laughs) Okay. I like it. That's good. (laughs) I like it too. I like the one in four chance of like an instant effect. So the the thing about it being like th- there aren't a lot of spells where you're not sure when the effect is going to happen that's true and it's usually crucial for your strategy to know exactly when the effect is going to happen usually but that means that it's also usually crucial for the enemy's strategy to know when the effect is going to happen Mm-hmm. Um, I, okay, I see where you're going. So I, with this. I like the idea of a spell whose effect is temporally unpredictable. I think that's cool. I think it's got like this, this like, uh, this aspect to it where where you could use that in the middle of a battle to throw somebody off who like the, the kind of character who's like, huh, I predicted this whole thing. They they just can't predict this. I mean, this spell. There are only two options. It's either this turn or next turn. Mm-hmm. So that's not too crazy. But even that can can be enough to throw some, you know, some situations out of whack a little bit. Yeah. Um, the, yeah. The whack is gone. Right. And you can take a chance and throw that down like right where you are. You know, and, and be like, all right, let's hope it let's hope it holds up. Yeah. And well, I can get away from it for my next turn because this turn I've got to do something here but if i do you know that kind of thing yeah my my immediate instinct was that this is a great one to throw into the fray where like some of your friends are in there Mm -hmm. because if it goes off right away it won't be so bad right but it also gives them a chance to get out of there before it explodes well if you throw this down right on where you are and someone else already knows what it will do Mm -hmm. it might make them move away from you giving you an a- attack of opportunity and then mm. you get your chance to run away from them on your next turn when it blows up. Well, it does say that it blows up oh, on, the it's on the start of your turn of your turn. Uh, that's not as good then. Right. 
By the but way, if you have if you manage to pair this with some kind of reaction that lets you move when someone else moves, that would do it. Yes. Uh, I don't think there is such a reaction, but why not? Let's make it. <laughs> Let's make a reaction. We, we can do homebrew hey, here. man, we've got a book coming out in October last year. Yeah. We should probably start working on a sequel to that. Yeah. It'll be, it'll yeah. be out, I think, uh, let's go with late mid-June 2022. Late mid-June. Yeah, let's do that. Let's mm -hmm. do late mid-June. That sounds yeah. good. Um, one thing I didn't realize, uh, this is a cantrip. Ah. Interestingly enough. And so people, like, could trip over it. Yes. So... Another thing I'm confused about, it says that the damage increases by a D6 at 5th, 11th, and 17th level, up to 4D6 at 17th level. Uh, so, but does it always only do 1D6 if it explodes immediately, or do, do both of the of, of the possibilities increase by a D6 every level? Uh, I don't, I don't know which I like better. Yeah. I don't know which I like better because yeah. by 17th level, 1d6 of damage is essentially useless. You might as well not have done anything. Right. Um, but the, but also the difference between 3d6 and 4d6 is not very much. No. So either option like i don't know it just because like when you're at low levels the difference between 1d6 and 2d6 is pretty big it's picking up on the mic that's hilarious the what the car driving yeah mic? the car driving by on the mic yeah yeah people who go to little caesars have some loud, loud music. cars oh and music yeah that's what that's what they're all driving by they're like oh, that's where i'm headed because i hear it all the time all the way from their parking lot like I can hear the music. Anyway, it doesn't matter right now. Sorry. No, no, you, no, no. no, no so for this spell to interest me fully, it needs <sighs> to have a larger temporal range. That's 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 what I think. Like w when I heard that about this spell, like you don't know when the effect is going to happen necessarily. I was like, let's make that big. You know, like like let's make it a certain. So the only problem is, though, it's hard to keep track of that for a certain number of turns unless you use like physical counters or something. Um, but you could do that. So you're saying that mm -hmm. at the start of each of your turns, you mm -hmm. roll it at the start of each of your turns, you roll a D4 mm -hmm. and it always explodes on a D4 and the damage uh, on a four it always explodes on a four and the damage Wait. increases by a D6 is every that what round it's supposed to do. No. Okay, it is actually just always supposed to explode. It, it the will always round. explode on the second turn. I think, but just what, give it a twenty-five percent chance each turn. Yeah, yeah, that would be even better. Because, like, in uh, fact, that's that's so cool. Because because then there's a chance that it will. Uh, well, well hold on, wait, even better. Mm -hmm. One extra d six of damage, and five extra feet of range yeah every, every turn every turn <laughs> and, and it could just turn into a giant lightning field right and and it could completely get out of your control because it's called unstable orb mm -hmm. i think that i think that there's a little bit of well but if if that was the case i think a cantrip is maybe a little bit too light mm -hmm. it, would, um, it would have to be a higher would, level spell it would never it would definitely need a spell slot third second or third Mm -hmm. I think would be fine though. Mm -hmm. uh, third is third might be too high. Yeah, third is probably too high. Yeah, I'm thinking second. I think first is too low. I think third is too high. Second right. seems good to me. Yeah, and and, and mm. so so it's a little tricky. Like you want to be able to use it a lot, but if that costs you a spell slot and it might only do one d six damage, and it might do it this like that's that's a lot of risk for not much reward. Whereas the cantrip with its ability to increase mm. damage as you level up, that's pretty good. Um, I, I guess you don't need to rely on lower level spells as you become higher level because that's why you get higher level spells. And so you might find that a spell that was useful for you 
when you are low level is no longer useful and you might get rid of it or whatever your class can do with this spell. But I just think, uh, yeah, it'd be cool if there was that like 25% chance of return of, of the explosion or 75% chance that it just gets bigger and it gets uh, more dangerous. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe second yeah. level is good. Like, I, I guess we'd have to look at the stats for it. But it almost feels like it has to be like the expected value of, of damage to be done and stuff like that has to be top class for its spell level. It has to be crazy good. You know, maybe because that <sighs> downside is so bad comparatively. Um, but it, like it m maybe it's fine because that's that's not what the spell is about. The spell is about the uncertainty. Yeah. You know, and I think it could, it could, um, now I'm thinking it could be kept a cantrip mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. even though there's a potential that it could do a lot of damage, it's going to take a really long time to get there. Right. Because it's around every time it happens. Mm -hmm. So it, 66 damage is possible, but it would take six rounds to do it. <laughs> yeah. And you'd have to survive that many rounds and, and roll that many uh dice and, and all that and stuff. the enemies would still have to be in range of it mm -hmm. like how can you get you can't well, the range is that. huge at that point though well, the range is what would it be uh 5 10 15 20 25 30, 30. Right? yeah 30 feet 30 that's feet. that's a let's in all directions right yeah 30 so, feet so a 30 foot radius circle yeah. mm -hmm. like our sphere i guess you're right 30 foot sphere um which is pretty big that's pretty big yeah. Well, I guess I guess they call do they do they refer to spheres by diameter? They do. So a 60 foot sphere at that point. Yeah. Yes. Which is a huge spell effect. That's like the biggest spell effect. That's like almost the biggest. It's like a it's like an eighth or ninth level spell effect. Yeah. <laughs> in uh, terms si of size. In terms of size. Yeah. But but that's fun. It's it's nowhere near <laughs> that in terms of damage though. Right. So that's no, okay. No. Yeah, yeah. The 66 is absolutely overkill mm -hmm. for a low level and at that character. point when it's that big you're you're starting to endanger your party a lot too right right and so it has enough i think it has enough drawbacks that it's not um it's not yeah it might not be uh it might not be a spell slot to balance it it might be a key yeah. trip yeah that, that's cool yes okay yes that is that is my new thought mm -hmm. about this i'll just agree with whatever you say yeah because mm -hmm. as we discussed that makes for the best show yeah of course right yeah we talked about it last episode mm -hmm. that if we just agree on everything yeah entirely every time just like how resonance makes for the best bridges perfect <laughs> perfect Perfect. Oh, whoop. that was, you know what? My bad, everybody. I made that uh, noise. That's okay. That Th was Those me. don't show up too bad in our, okay. in our audio usually okay. now. Okay. okay, that's good. And if they that's do, good. I'll find out when I'm listening to it and be like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. and then I'll fix it. So Destroy your drums. Should be okay, yeah. Those drums in your ears. Yep, only, well, it, so yeah, because like, I didn't even hear it in the direct monitoring just now. So it, it's not going to be that bad in the final audio. That's true. I heard it in my leg, so I just right. thought it was loud, I guess. Yeah. You got that leg ears. You know, I think we might have time for one more. What do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, we got we Because this is, this is a tiny guy. We got a little tiny little guy. That Kyle. Okay, that's the that's username. That's the username, okay. that Kyle. Uh, you know how you spell Kyle? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Well, that's not how he spells Kyle. <gasps> It's, he spells it K-A-E-L, but it's got to be oh. pronounced Kyle. It could be Kel. Kel, maybe. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it's Kyle. I like Kyle, though. <laughs> yeah. I definitely want to name a child Kyle, but spell it like that. Yeah. That's. Not my child. No. That but, would be uh, cruel. But, any, but as anybody else's I child. I will convince someone else to do this yes. to their poor, poor child. Yes. To their poor Kyle child. Their poor, their poor Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> this is another cantrip. It's called Contagious Fatigue. Man, that sounds crazy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you invoke 
your powerful manipulation of the mind and you let out a fake yawn. <laughs> the nearest humanoid within range, uh -huh. which is 20 feet, that can see you or hear you must make a wisdom saving throw. Yep. If they, are, if they succeed, they're immune to the effects of this cantrip for an hour. But if they fail, they must immediately use their reaction to yawn. For one minute after this, the target makes saving throws to avoid falling asleep with disadvantage. Okay. Now, I, what I really want, though, is for mm -hmm. it to be really contagious. Mm -hmm. oh and spread yeah and just keep going just keep going At every turn if they don't fall asleep they it, like if they've succumbed to the initial effect and they don't fall asleep they yawn and it hits the nearest creature yeah the nearest the one nearest to them mm -hmm. just a cascading effect of yawn right but that would be too powerful and put everybody to sleep all like guarantee the whole world yeah it would be, it would be a yondemic it would be <laughs> The yondemic is upon us. Yondemic doesn't really make sense because, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yondemic doesn't make sense for the, the, the reason if you carry the two anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I like this fellow. I like it a lot. Uh, I think that this would be. Yeah, it's fun. First off, I love the, the sort of like haughtiness of it. Like the, just like, Oh yeah, I can get this guy. Watch. Uh, yeah, and, and then the the like everyone in your party is like, oh, this guy is so full of it right now. Great, I'm so glad that we're working. But then they the, then like a couple seconds later, the dude does fall asleep. Right, and they're like, what? What? How? Did, what? <laughs> I like the subtlety of it. Mm -hmm. Um, though interestingly enough, the only components are verbal, but. I think the but verbal the, component the sound is of the, yawn. the yawn. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that way it can affect creatures who hear you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That is, that is really subtle, isn't it? Yeah. So like you can, cause everyone will just be like, oh, they yawned. Right. It, it, it strikes me. It's great in, I think this would be great in a, in a, uh, a heist setting, mm -hmm. you know, where you're like in the casino and you're like undercover and like, oh man, this guy's on to you. Mm -hmm. And so you're just like, and you know, and then, then they're just like, oh, 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 and they fall asleep and you're just like, oh man, <laughs> take the shot, take the shot. <laughs> no, wait, wait, really? Right now? Uh, like, are you sure? We're not at that part of our plan yet. Yeah. Did you read the plan? <laughs> are, are you like, are, are you, do you know what we're doing? We, 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 we definitely practiced this there, a bunch of times. Yeah. Yeah. There's a model. There was a mo Remember the model we made out of Lego. Right. Remember that? Yeah. We've been over this many. Nobody has a gun. Do you, <laughs> what are you saying? Take the shot. I don't know what you mean. Actually. Hey, you know, I've always had this problem with you, but I think we should probably talk about this now before we continue. Because, like, like all of us take this really seriously. This is my job. Like, I have a wife and three kids. And yeah. this is my, like, job. This is how I support them. And I just feel like you don't take this seriously enough. Right. Yeah. Is this just, like, a hobby to you? It, like, what, what are You're you just here for? You're just doing this for fun? What are you here for? Yeah. Come on. I'm in. Take the shot. Come on, man. Like... <laughs> Are you listening to yourself right now? Do you hear your, do you even hear yourself? <laughs> and like, you don't even use our code names, right? Right. Like you're, you're supposed to end the message with a code name. Mm hmm. Lord Flappy out. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Dingleberry in here. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, what? What? 